my way is not the only way, but I'll, I'll tell you what my way was. Uh, it's, I, I studied a lot of ancient traditions. I traveled to, to the Eskimos and it was Eskimos, not Inuits. Um, I traveled to Siberia and the Amazon and the, uh, you know, I've, I've been sitting in sweat lodges where I'm the only white person, the only person without a peace pipe. So I've you know, done a lot. I've been asked to teach in Siberia. I've, now I'm in Kenya uh, and connecting with these ancient tribes, with the seers and the, uh, and so I studied them and I would, in my life, I would always think now, how would they do it? How would they deal with this situation? How would, what attitude would they take? Hello and welcome everyone to Peace People. I am here with Una today, Una Saleh Ferguson originated in Scotland, and she is one of my first guests in Peace People, where I talk to people who have already, who are embodying the peace from within and are anchored in that field, in that frequency of pure love that is like an offer to all of us to be part of this and feel that fine, very fine frequency. Hello, Una. <laughs> Hello, Marlene. <laughs> Thank you. So, so good much. to be with you. And uh, just to say, uh, I'm half Scottish, I'm half Swiss. Ah, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So as you all can see, um, I want to speak a little bit about Una before we dive into our conversation. Um, it's more about the feelings I want everyone to invite. To, to feel into the presence that you can see and feel with Una. That was what inspired me to invite you for our conversation, Una, because I felt that there is some inner peace that you have already established in your being. So it was for me like, wow, okay, I want to speak to her because um, she, is, she is not very outgoing with, <laughs> I am here, I am a peacemaker. She is just someone who has already established that for herself in her inner being. And what I've also noticed is, um, I, I, <laughs> I was happening to, to, um, to see her when, when she was in an interview, um, <laughs> just as we as i am with her today and and then there were people in the background because she's right now in kenya and she was when i <laughs> met her the first time um in that interview as um, someone in the audience and <laughs> i saw those people in the back of of her um interview scenery and they were talking to her and she was so kind-heartedly talking back to them, just giving them the information they needed in order to let go of her and, and have her, um, let her have the, the conversation she had. So for me, that was very important to see that it's not just something you do in front of the camera, <laughs> like one time <laughs> being there and, and then afterwards you go here. Ways and um, dive into the hustle and bustle of life and are a completely different person, but you are from your heart a presence that is kind and loving to all that is going on around you and all that is in your field. So thank you, Una, for being here in peace, people, and being here on earth as well as someone who is a presence for peace well thank you very much for that beautiful introduction marlene marlene uh, it's it's wonderful to meet you too because that feeling that feeling is you know it's rare it's rare we do find it but it's it's so wonderful to find it in you too and and i really appreciate that you are bringing these people together uh, you know, being at peace doesn't 
necessarily make you an activist to go out, like you said, because you've got that inner peace. And at the same time, there's a longing, a desire to find that peace in other people. So yes, I do that when I speak to people very often, I am looking for exactly what you're saying. I'm looking for that inner essence, that inner spark, which is at peace, that soul. And, uh, you know, that's just flickers and a moment here, a moment there sometimes, but really bringing people together in this way. Uh, I'm so appreciative of you doing that. Thank you so much. Yeah, so that, that brings me to my first question. What is peace really for you? So if you think maybe you can explain not what is peace in terms of what the mind would think what peace is, but if you could describe what this world looks like as a world of peace, what does it look like? It's, I think it's a matter of being at peace with every person and in every situation, no matter what is happening, no matter how terrible it might seem, you're at peace with someone dying, you're at peace with accidents, you're at peace with other people having other opinions. And you know how to always find it again and again within yourself. I've had a, 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 how should I describe my life? A very interesting life, a very multidimensional life, both physically and in consciousness. And you really have to have that, um, that anchor in yourself. You have to come back to that, that frequency that, that, they, that life tends to take away from you in childhood. Right, yeah. When you're trying to integrate into a society that is not at peace. Yeah. And for me, you know, I noticed that many people are really children. They're, they're integrating into this society, in their consciousness. They're trying to, to be that society. Yeah. And I never really did that. I never integrated i always looked at society i looked at people and thought hmm, i don't want to be like that i don't want to make friends with people just because i need a friend if that was an issue for me at school there were 36 children in the class but nobody seemed to be the kind of person i wanted to be friends with and I remember my mother sitting on my bed and oh, this was second grade by now, so first grade, second grade, and, and we're going through all the people in my class and she's just trying to find somebody who would be a friend for me. Yeah. And, and there really was no one. So did you have siblings or any um, yes. sisters or brothers? Yes, I had three siblings, three brothers. Oh. <laughs> and uh, yes, and... Two of them were absolutely wonderful, and one was uh, born with, I would say, emotional troubles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, social troubles, and that that was quite something to live with. And for example, um, I trained myself to wake up very early in the morning because I knew that he, he couldn't even walk yet. He mm -hmm. would climb out of his cot and he would destroy all that we had built, my older brother and me, um, mm -hmm. the games and the toys that we had set up. He would, with much joy, he would just go and destroy everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and his, his intention was very much about triggering me. Mm -hmm. So having to deal with that was was quite some training. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, yeah. So life sends us uh, lots of things to to give us the necessity of anchoring deep within ourselves. 
with that sense of peace if we already have this feeling okay we don't want to play those games of um fear and and always being the one who is on top of everything so um what what would you say are the most important things in your personal life but also for people that give them the tools to really make the decision and and really get the ability to anchor <laughs> Yeah, well, I think there's many ways, and as as the ancient ancient ones say, my way is not the only way. But I'll I'll tell you what my way was. Uh, it's I I studied a lot of ancient traditions. I traveled to to the Eskimos, and it was Eskimos, not Inuits. Um, I traveled to Siberia and the Amazon, and the, uh, I've been sitting in sweat lodges where I'm the only white person, the only person without a peace pipe. So I've you know, done a lot. I've been asked to teach in Siberia. I've, now I'm in Kenya uh, and connecting with these ancient tribes, with the seers. And, the, and so I studied them and I would in my life, I would always think now, how would they do it? How would they deal with this situation? How would, what attitude would they take? And that, um, that has been extremely helpful. Um, not that all of them are peaceful, but it gives me uh, something to go back in time to see how it used to be in, in traditional ways. And the, other thing I did was study feelings and emotions, and I wrote a book on that because it, that helped me tremendously to figure out how emotions actually work. Uh, it's and that they are a game. Yeah. Emotions are a game. For example, as soon as you feel like you're walking on eggshells with somebody, mm -hmm. you know there's something that's not right you know that that person is emanating something that is not at peace and that is abusive and trying to control you through power. So you're being controlled by somebody else's emanations. You can be controlled by somebody else's anger. You know, you're afraid of them throwing a tantrum. So you're going to tiptoe around them or you're afraid of them bursting into tears as soon as you say the wrong thing. That's also, um, needing to tiptoe around the person uh, so there's 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 these um subliminal threats that are abusive mm -hmm. and that are not conducive to peace uh, so learning how to be in this these situations and moving our emotions which we all have to a place where they are clean and clear. The anger emotion, for example, moving it to martial arts, where instead of throwing a tantrum and saying, this is what I don't want, moving it to, this is what I want. It's clean and clear, no shouting, it's just very exact. And there's no discussion about it. It's just, this is what I want. It's a decision. It's a, we talked about this, um, it's a discernment. It's moving from um, moving from judgment to discernment. Mm -hmm. And so it's 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 like deciding: Do I want the green pillow or the yellow pillow? It's it's a discernment. I take the decision. And um, yeah, so feelings, really understanding the game that is played with feelings, the fear that is put into us, understanding how we're being influenced with the mind. That's why I studied hypnosis. I experienced um, brainwashing situations where I also needed to start meditating. So I think meditation daily meditation is absolutely necessary to center back into ourselves because we're surrounded by so much that takes us away and so much that is 
um, unhealthy for us. For example, you know, just the way the buildings are built. So some of them are very, with very sharp angles and some, and they're very ugly, um, gray. Uh, or the music that is put out on frequencies, or you, know, you, you have to listen to everybody's music and, and the motors. And it is so different when you're in a place where you hear the sounds of birds and um, you hear maybe mantras or bells and uh, birds and animals and children playing and singing. And it's so different from being in a town. The environment is very important, but what I wanted to say about meditation is that I used to think, mm -hmm. and I just wasn't getting the hang of meditation, so I used to think, well, men have a very focused mind, and so meditation is more for men, and women have a multitasking mind, um, you know, we can have the baby on the hips and the phone on the ear, and we can stir in the soup and put our eye on the grandmother, oh. so it's very difficult to focus. But I found that it's actually essential for women too. And once I got the hang of it, uh, I loved it. I loved it and I wouldn't miss it, wouldn't want to miss it. Um, and I learned it in a very, very simple way. I just said to this, this young man, uh, I said, I'm, I'm just not getting it. So he said, let's do it together. And he sat next to me and, and and we just meditated for 15 minutes. He just said a few words and then I could, and that was it. We just sat there and I could feel how his mind was focusing and going into a different frequency. So going into that other frequency, and I think there's many frequencies for different meditations. Um, that, was, that was extremely helpful. Yeah. So also being, being alone, is something that I think is very important because we have other people have impressions on us just by being in their aura they they have an influence on us so if we sleep with somebody else in the same aura field we are being defined by the other and the other is being defined by us in a certain way and you know that's fine you can do that but you always need time during the day where you are outside the aura of other people. And perhaps you even need to do that uh, for a few days or a few weeks if you can, which is what I did. I, I just spent four weeks in, in a beautiful tented camp and I was the only person there. And uh, I, I, I was alone and yes, I would go for sometimes for, for lunch or for a meal up and I would see people. Um, but basically I was day and night, I was by myself meditating, looking out onto the animals, the elephants, the giraffes, the buffaloes that came by and listening to their sounds, hippos grunting through the night. So yeah, I think, it is very important. The environment is very important. And what we do in the environment is very important. And so for me, daily meditation, um, listening to healthy music, sacred music, making your own music is even better. It's not coming out of a can, singing. Uh, now, now I'm by the ocean and I make sure I'm in the ocean for an hour every day in that salt water and just, I just feel feel happy and I'm all there all by myself and I just sing and do my yoga in the water. Just having a routine like that really always connects me again and again to, to me, to who I am, to that peace that I am. Thank you so much. So from what I've heard, it's two things. It's the lifestyle with what you, how you spend your time. And it, it always has to do with solitude and with going deeper into your own self being, discovering yourself and doing that on a regular basis. And also making sure that you have things that, that you spend your time with that nourish you. Like, as you said, um, being 
at the beach or in nature, singing, listening to, to sacred music. And um, yeah, meditation, surrounding yourself maybe with people you want to be with or have the same similar frequency. And then there is, on the other hand, the, the path that allows you to establish that peace within you, dealing with the emotions you said it's, it's a huge thing. So what is the book called that you have written? It's called The Brilliance of Your Feelings. And the subtitle is, subtitle is um, You Are the Secret. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's really, you know, your feelings are really brilliant because you, you can do so much with them once you understand them once you understand that you are not your emotions it's not who i am it is something that is programmed into us a little bit different with, with each person uh, and human design helps with that but uh it's and you become free you come become free of those emotions that you think you are and you, you say this person is, is a very angry person, or, you know, but that's not the person. That's the program by how you're born and by how the environment acts with you. And you can learn to, to work that program. You can, you know, it's, it's easy. You get rid of the stuff that's stuck inside of you. And and you become conscious of what's happening. You become conscious of how other people work and how you work. And, and um, yeah, it's, you, you can do that. That is great. I love that. So, so what I um, get is that you, you take life as a, um, a teacher <laughs> almost. So all that happens to you in life adds to you experimenting what you can do in order to overcome those challenges as you um, shared before with your um, brother <laughs> who was always destroying everything that led to you finding solutions to deal with that and to deal with those emotions that led to this wonderful book we will link that below the video <laughs> um, so that everyone can have a look at it if it speaks to you and yes and so it, it is um, I, I like the way you describe it. We have our soul, or you didn't say that, but we, we have something that is permanent and that is the essence that is flowing through everyone. It's all the same. And then there is those programs. There is the program that we as um, uh, what, that we are born with and, and that um, you said is um, interacting with people. And um, we can learn to you said to, um, ah, I don't know, how, how did you express that, that we are the masters of that program? <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 you're saying it's absolutely right. Um, we, um, it's, it's not, the subtitle is not, you are the secret, the subtitle is, you are the answer. So, you know, like, like all the big yogis said, go inside because all the answers are within us. We have the answer to deal with every situation that comes and we have the choice to be in certain situations or not in other situations so uh, for example you know after a year of um, gray winters in europe and and being locked in mm -hmm. very little contact it, it just clicked with me i have a choice i don't have to sit in a gray gray winter and i don't have to be locked in and that's how um i came to kenya uh, two days after i had decided that i received um I, I, re I received the option of going to kenya and looking after a lodge because the people who had just bought it couldn't be there and uh you know we we have we have those decisions. We have the ability to go through that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's a matter of using our emotions. It's that decision that, that is basically anger, but it's, it's taking, it's making the choice 
yeah. with with that martial arts type anger not with the tantrum i don't like this and i don't like the lockdown and i don't like the gray winters it's the this is what i want i don't want this i want this yes okay very good so um since you addressed that you you went to kenya in times like um pandemic and lockdown and what we had and um, just now and um, i mean most of the people who are taking very clear stands when it comes to what am i taking into my body what am i not taking into my body it is um, also a very clear decision to make and those um who have that inner voice that says okay i am not no, no one can force me <laughs> to to take something that doesn't feel right for my system how did you handle that because you are travel it, it sounds to me like how did you do that in in times of this did you did you fly did you um, <laughs> how did you manage to get to kenya uh, without compromising your own inner knowledge mm -hmm. um, absolutely did not compromise it um, i have a very good network yes and um, so you just need to know the right people. We did things like that within two weeks, I, I traveled with uh, two young people. They, they came with me within two weeks. We had everything packed, wow. stored away, given to friends in people's cellars, and we were on a plane. And in those two weeks, we did things like meeting others in a field without our cell phones Great. there is there is always when you are in times of trouble you know every war situation any kind of situation like that you can find the right people who so gladly helped us in so many ways somebody had the car somebody had the right um um possibilities and connections to to um deal with you know i wouldn't even take a test that just wouldn't work for me so um yeah that's how it works. <laughs> that that's exactly how it works and once you're in kenya kenya is a corrupt country anyway so it's absolutely not supposed to to get whatever you need um, and this is the whole issue is really a non-issue here. Yeah. People die of malaria; they don't die of anything else. Yeah. And, and that was so freeing. And there's plenty of sunshine to do sun gazing and feed off the sun. And and uh, you know, it's there's you, you just cannot enforce such rules and regulations. Yeah in a place where there's so many people who just already have had the experience that they've been they've been used as guinea pigs right exactly yeah. so mm -hmm. so yes there's some that will go with it but i think officially it's 15 percent. i don't know how many it really is mm -hmm. and and for the others it's it's a non-issue it's not something that's being talked about. Great. So what I like about um, what you just shared is that um, it's you. We decide in which frequency band we we communicate. So without cell phone meeting people, that's telepathy. Even if you don't call it like that <laughs> or give it any name, it is knowing that you send out a frequency and that's similar to what you said before with the emotions when we're very clear in our intention and it comes from let's say a we game so that is what we are wanting to to step into the the harmony with all not just me me i want to be like um the one who can manifest everything on earth and i want to show to everyone um but really coming from that that space of inner this is what i am here to, to to do and to be and for and and i feel my calling is to to go to kenya so um i i'm just gonna do what is necessary and then you 
get into that flow. And that's what I um, sensed here, that you really got into that flow. And that's something that as I have experienced it. Um, you, you, the moment we let go of the fear game and let go of the boundaries from the mind, we, we can just relax and really have the trust that it takes in order to take us where we are needed. So even if you would have um, been stopped somewhere at the border and <laughs> it wouldn't have been possible, okay, well, you, you would have probably not had a, an angry outburst or something. What would, it, what, um, how do you deal with a situation like that when, when people um, don't allow some things or what is your, your uh. yeah. Uh, so I've been trained as a Clorandero and I was seven years I spent as a, an assistant to shaman. So I have a lot of, um, and, you know, and other things. I've, I've got a lot of techniques um, that I can use. So uh, if, if I see the police somewhere, I, I send out love. I send out bliss and happiness. I just go into that bliss and happiness and I already see myself past that border, that crossing. I already see myself um, on the other side of what it is. So as soon as, as, soon as I see a border, I, a, a, an issue, a police a, a situation, I see myself beyond that whilst sending out bliss and, bliss and happiness. It's like yesterday I... I I had to show my driver's license before board, boarding the ferry with the car. And, and I'm just, you know, I'm just in bliss and happiness and that's catching. Yeah. And so the, the, the lady policeman, she, she looks at me and she says, oh, this is very different from, from the ones we have here. I said, yes, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and this is, you know, something about manifesting the first thing we have to manifest is ourselves before we manifest other things. And so going into who we really are and which is this and love and infinity and eternity and all those good things, when we manifest that within us, um, the, we can manifest other things. We can, yeah, it's easy to man manifest physical things then. So, so true. Wow. Thank you. So, so what I want to um, point out after you have just said that is that everyone, every single person that surrounds us is in the first a place, in, in the first place, it's is so. So and we always have the choice to either connect to the function of that person, like the policeman or the one from the finance department or whoever, um, who tends to be a, or seems to be a threat to us, or we can, we can directly go through that and just <laughs> leave all those functions of that person aside and connect with the soul. And that is something that I feel, you, you mentioned it very quickly, but I think it's a very big one <laughs> to share, that, that we really allow ourselves to see the divine in the other to see the person not just the function or what they are supposed to do or be but really see that there is something that they can they can um feel deeper into as well as so what I mean, if they go in resonance with the frequency that you emanate in that moment of, of love and bliss as you said and peace and then um they perceive that they um, tend not to have an interest in dragging you out and being the function they are supposed to be but rather get the opportunity to to have a moment of peace and that is quite different to um going into that with a, a mindset of fear or trying to uh, walking on eggshells as you said before in order to get across the border it is a completely different game that you're playing there let's say yeah it's up leveled yeah thank you yes it's reaching the soul is something i'd like to share an experience i had in st petersburg i was asked to teach there and uh, i soon realized 
that I was being um, followed and used as a guinea pig for experimentations with brainwashing. And so the second course I gave there, we moved it. Friday evening, we decided we're going to have it in a different place. Mm -hmm. And half an hour before we started, somebody called and asked if she could join. And the person who arrived was not the kind of person who comes to my type of courses. She was an elderly lady with a handbag and gray, more the sort of the, the person who a museum ward making sure nobody touches the paintings it's a sort of that mm -hmm. kind of person and uh, we soon realized that she she was there to to check on me and report and so in the in the night i was thinking now what what do i do with this how do i deal with this and i just wanted to reach her essence i wanted to reach her person I wanted to get smiles on her face. I wanted to yes, go deep. And so that was my intention. And so the next morning, Sunday morning, I did that. And, I, and she was in tears. She was in tears because I could reach her heart. Yes. And that was, yeah, that's, that was so beautiful. And it just also trained me to really, really do that with people when the necessity is there. I really like that. And also what you said, when the necessity is there. So um, we we spoke about discernment before. So it, it is also a responsibility as someone who has a big mission or let's say who has already um, realized what he or she is here for, that we know where to spend our time and where not to spend our time. You spoke about the surrounding that um, we need to choose, con choose consciously in order to not get fractured again and again all, all day long. And as you, you said, sometimes people come to us and, and then it's, it's our task to, to do what we are here for. But we don't have to necessarily choose always those people to to reach because um there are so many people who are on the edge of of getting this um emerging into that frequency of harmony of peace of heartfelt love pure love and they are hungry for this so if we let them starve <laughs> in order to feed those who are hungry for different things that um that is um, also not that kind of responsibility that I would say is necessary in order to be part of an evolving world. And it's always like that. It's not with a specific task like that. It is like the policeman needs to know who he's responsible for and who he lets slip in order to get the big fish. <laughs> and it's, it's similar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yes, our choice of who we want to be with and handling the situations that come to us. Yes, so my choice has, has been to be here until who knows when. Yes. Because it just feels very good, just very, very comfortable. We talked before and you said that you are, um, you moved um, all the time before, um, but now you you are settling into a eight room apartment. Is that true, a lodge? A lodge? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's, it's just magical, I guess. It's part of manifesting. Uh, we, we will be renting a lodge as of next month. Uh, so that would be, what is it now? May, May and it's it's June, June. next June, month. Yes, so June. Um, uh, we will have eight high end rooms and no four four high end rooms and four little beautiful little huts all en suite. And we're just thinking, how are we going to fill all of that, and what are we going to do with that? And and my wish is that peace people would come and want to spend time in this beautiful, beautiful lodge close to the coast, just half an hour to the beach and with a swimming pool and old mango trees and neem trees. The neem tree is um, called the tree of 
40, 40 healings. So it heals pretty much everything and anything from malaria to whatever, uh, uh, COVID, uh, wh whatever is out there. Uh, so yeah, it would be wonderful if, if you came and visited us, uh, you particularly, Malina, and maybe there's other people watching this and might want to contact us and to come and be here um, with us with organic food and no chem chemtrails and uh, the swimming pool has no chlorine so really a pure environment we want to keep it pure in mind in emotions in uh, also our physical reality yeah that's wow. That is really great. So I, I want to put emphasis on this because we are, of course, it's you and me, Una and Marlene Gather here from Leipzig and from Kenya. Um, but, but it's also those people that are, uh, or souls that are tuning into this uh, channel sooner or later. So in simultaneous time, we are all here already. And, and I really want to, to invite you, everyone who is watching and listening and feeling I, I feel something from my heart. Peace people is not a species. It is just a choice. It is the choice to be a person of peace, not more, not less. So if you can feel that and feel it, the, the calling, maybe you want to connect with Una, um, it just go ahead and do that. I, I really always want to emphasize that because we are so often, we have that, that feeling in our heart. Oh, I would like to connect with that lady, but... Um, She's uh, she's too far away. I'm not good enough. I um I'm not yet merged in peace <laughs> that much. Um, she will discover all my shortcomings, all of that. <laughs> so uh, go beyond that. And really, if you feel connected, reach out to Una or also reach out to me, because um it is a time where we are all interconnected already on the subtle levels, but it is also a time where it is good to be connected outwardly. And, and um, most of the people are finding right now their place to live, are finding their place to be. So um, yeah, just go ahead and have a conversation with Una <laughs> if, you, if that speaks to you. Yeah, great. Yes, absolutely. Yes, uh, to connect with me. Um, I also give courses once in a while, but I'm I'm not putting anything up on the internet in that direction, so you won't find it there. You will find my website, but there's it says there's no courses happening at the moment, and I don't think we'll be um, putting anything out about uh, the lodge and visiting. It really is like. It, like meeting in a field without cell phones. That's the way it is. That's so great. The plan. Yeah. Oh, I really love that. Yeah. So we could have lots of things talking about. I know that there are other things, but maybe we um, spare that for a, a separate, a different conversation. <laughs> for today, um, Una, what would you like to share with all of us who are? in this right now and um, joined in <laughs> feeling that frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say, you know, if uh, start monitoring your thoughts and if you have a low thought, a low thought that, oh, I don't like that person's sweater, uh, you know, immediately follow that up with a loving thought. So it's it, just monitor what you are thinking, monitor what you're feeling. And every time just send out the positive afterwards, because it's very hard to always have positive thoughts and positive emotions, but we can remedy them. And I do also believe and see in visions, and I know others are doing that too, is that we are moving to different frequencies that where it becomes more and more difficult to talk to people who are in other frequencies. Just like it's not that easy to talk or simple to talk to interdimensional beings. 
And this is what's happening with humanity. You know, we talk, but we talk two different languages. Or I experience people don't see me, or they walk into me, or they can't hear me. Although, you know, although they're in my proximity, they can't hear, they physically cannot hear me. And so I think it's, it's a half truth when we hear these days that we must not be split. It's what's happening and it's okay that it's happening. And I think one of the worlds is going to stay the way it is and the other world is actually going to, um, uh, like it said in the Bible, where the, the lion will lie down with the lamb, where nobody eats nobody. I really see that happening. I had an, this experience, I was in a, visiting somebody and I was in a, a safari lodge near Nairobi and uh, it, it was, there's so many different kinds of lodges. The one I was in there was, there was tray after tray, waiter after waiter coming by with these sizzling um, chunks of meat next to french fries and it's not like i officially am a vegetarian or a vegan or a breatharian anything of that, of that kind but it just it just struck me in that moment that these people have spent the day looking at animals and they, they come back to the lodge and they they're just enjoying these huge chunks of meat and i just in that moment saw the discrepancy I also know that there's other ways of dealing with me that I've spent many, many months with Eskimos. So I, I know there's a different way of treating, a different way of killing, a different way of relating to that. It's just in that moment that struck me. We don't have to eat each other. And um, I, I believe that that's where we're moving to, that that's where some of us are moving to where it's it's going to happen automatically that we don't eat each other that we automatically move to being able to be sun gazers again i was in tenerife and i read and this pyramids in tenerife and i was reading one of the notes on the signs in that museum type place and it said that the people would sit on the steps of the pyramids and observe the rising sun. That's what the steps were for. And I thought, hmm, yes, they are sun gazers. They were eating the sun directly. And also I was visiting a seer of the Samburu tribe here in Kenya. Um, actually, no, that's not what it was. It, it wasn't then, it was, I was with the Nandi tribe people. And this woman told me that I, I was telling her that I wanted to sun gaze and where would be the best place. And she told me that her, her grandfather was, his name was the one who rises early. And he always got up to watch the sun and he was focused on the sun and he would not move his focus from the sun, even though she as a little girl was dancing around him. And she said, she just loved that energy, but she didn't know what he was doing. So this, this knowledge is still in the older generation somewhere. Um, so, yeah, I, it, 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 you know, be careful with how you build it up. There's, there's websites where you can learn how to do it. And it's 10 seconds and then you add another 10 seconds every day and you do it an hour be, um, after it's, the sun rises and or an hour before the sun sets. Uh, and, and it's supposed to cure and heal everything from physical ailments to our our emotions and our soul fills fills our heart with joy so yeah i think those are the things i'd just also like to share at, as as a way forward if anybody is interested but again my way is not the only way Everybody has their own way.
Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate having that conversation with you. And both of us know there's many, many things to share also. But um, for today, I think we are good. Is there anything that that goes down a, um, a message or anything that, that you want to wrap up with? Uh, just a, a well, not just, but a big, big thank you to you, Marlene. The that idea of looking for the inner peace in the other people, I find that so beautiful, and I am so grateful to you for bringing people together. Wow! Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm glad we found each other. You found me. Me. <laughs> me too. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. And that is and, yes, and I do encourage everybody who who feels like they want to connect with me, you're most welcome. My website is unaferguson.com. I suppose you'll put that in the of in course, the yeah. I will put yeah. that, put that there. The video. Great. And that is exactly how it works. So you made yourself visible to me and I was able to reach out. And yeah, so everyone is invited to do the same. Many thanks again and speak to you soon, Una. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.